Hello, I am Washtenaw County Sheriff Jerry Clayton. And I am Washtenaw Intermediate School District Superintendent Scott Menzel. Our police officers are seeing children who have been affected by trauma and toxic stress every day. That's why law enforcement is excited about the Handle with Care initiative. This initiative bridges the communication gap between schools and law enforcement to better support the children who need it most. The Handle with Care initiative is simple. When one of your students is exposed to a traumatic event, that could be anything from a house fire to a shooting to domestic violence, a law enforcement officer will notify the designated individuals at your school in the form of a Handle with Care notice to the child's teacher. Because Washtenaw ISD is committed to supporting educators across our county, we've developed these series of videos that will help you understand some of the short and long-term signs of trauma that you might observe in a child while at school. The videos will also provide you with some helpful information about how you can create a supportive environment in your classroom. Lastly, we'll direct you where you can find even more information on trauma in children. On behalf of the members of the Handle with Care Cross-Sector Implementation Team, Thanks for your commitment to supporting the children and youth of Washtenaw County. Hello, my name is Dr. Polly Gibson, I'm a clinical child psychologist, and I'm on the faculty at Michigan Medicine, University of Michigan, as a clinical assistant professor in the Department of Child Psychiatry. I also serve as the director of our Trauma and Grief Clinic. I'm here to talk with you today about what might be some of the warning signs of traumatic reactions in youth. We know that traumatic stress occurs when trauma-exposed youth are overwhelmed by their reactions. This might include their actions, behaviors, emotions, as well as their cognitions. Traumatic events might involve a range of different experiences, including maltreatment, exposure to violence, traumatic grief, and or other adverse circumstances. Traumatic reactions are plentiful in school and commonly occur when youth experience trauma reminders. These are sounds, images, smells, emotions, people, and or situations that might trigger their memories of past traumatic events. A lack of awareness of traumatic reactions may contribute to harsh disciplinary practices and other unhelpful responses that may re-traumatize students. Other secondary adversities might include lower GPAs, higher absenteeism, as well as increased dropout rates. Traumatic stress is a wicked problem with far-reaching tentacles that may manifest in a myriad of complex ways. These might include their academic, emotional, behavioral, or social functioning, and they can be very difficult to discern. Awareness of the signs and symptoms, as well as adverse impacts, is particularly important in the school setting. As you know, youth spend the majority of their time here. Academically, we know that traumatic stress can impair learning due to its interference with essential cognitive processes that involve attention, memory, and the ability to organize and process information. This might result in changes in the student's academic performance. Emotionally, we know that trauma-exposed youth may experience anxiety, fear, or worry, this might be about their safety or the safety of their loved ones. They might also exhibit irritability, moodiness, somatic complaints, or other post-traumatic stress symptoms, such as numbness, hypervigilance, jumpiness, and uncontrollable intensive thoughts. Behavioral dysregulation for traumatized youth is often a constant state of hyperarousal, masked as impulsivity, hyperactivity, or intense explosive outbursts. This might be toward their authority figures like yourselves or even their peers. This can also result in secondary adversities, such as office referrals that might lead to suspensions and expulsions. Socially, we know that trauma-exposed youth might misinterpret social cues, miss 
perceived threat and non-threatening situations, and or withdraw from their peers or other activities, even those that they previously enjoyed. I would recommend for you to stay on the lookout for these changes. These changes may be in the form of students' actions, behaviors, cognitions, and or moods. Perhaps think of it as the inside-outside puzzle. That is, what might be those reactions going on for a student on the inside that you cannot see? Next, think about what you can see, meaning it's happening on the outside. Now, I realize that you cannot connect the dots on your own, so let me reassure you that you do not need to. Instead, think of it as putting together a puzzle that has missing pieces, but you're just going to focus on the pieces that you have. A handle with care notification, warning signs that might be traumatic reactions, and or changes that concern you that are going on on the outside. So, once you've put your puzzle together, we're going to try to think about some tips. These are trauma-informed practices for schools. What might be some tips that you can implement? So, as a starting point, we know that even as youth, they still need a sense of safety, belonging, and competence just as they did when they were youngsters. These are useful tips to keep in mind for all of your students. Another tip that you might want to think about is STEPS. STEPS is an acronym for you to use to help you to remember how you might want to interact with a student in a trauma-informed way. Again, keep in mind that the student might be experiencing traumatic reactions and or stress. Often when a student becomes dysregulated, she or he could also benefit from some grounding exercises. That's another tip. For example, you could ask your student to name three things in the room that are blue. You could also engage them in this tool, time in. This tip would allow you to instruct the student to take time in to fill their feet, back, or hands, for example. And don't forget to remind them to check on their breathing. Another tip that I'd like to talk to you about that is a trauma-informed practices for schools is the color wheel. This is a tool that some teachers have found useful as a whole classroom approach. The purpose of the color wheel is to help facilitate open communication amongst students about their stress levels. Now, similar to when the captain instructs passengers to ensure their oxygen mask is secure before helping their neighbor, you should first take note of what zone you're in. If you fall within the yellow zone, which is indicative of serious or temporary stress reactions that can be buffered by supportive relationships, or let's say you find yourself in the red zone, which is indicative of more prolonged traumatic stress reactions, typically in the absence of needed support, please make sure to take steps to help move you into the green zone or a more tolerable level in the yellow zone before you begin working with your students. Now that you have ensured that your oxygen mask is secure, next encourage the student to share how he or she is feeling in that moment using the color wheel and help them to understand that the yellow zone might mean that additional supports would be helpful whereas the red zone would suggest that he or she is in a danger zone and likely won't be able to focus on anything else until they can move into the yellow zone. So the goal here might be to help a student focus on using their strategies like those grounding techniques we just talked about to aid them in calming down in the moment. Lastly, here are some additional whole classroom approaches to help all of your students. These include ensuring that you have created a calm and predictable classroom, helping students prepare for the many transitions they will experience throughout the school day, establishing quiet or safe spaces or zones within your classroom, allowing for sensory breaks both within and outside of the classroom, and fostering an environment of students showing kindness and respect to each other. Additionally, you might wanna consider identifying trauma or loss reminders in an effort to try to reduce those within your classroom. And another tip would be to encourage students to practice mindfulness as well as other breaks within your classroom. We're at a point where you might be thinking, you've seen some of these warning signs in your students, and you're wondering what to do next. 
So we're going to briefly talk about when to refer a student for additional supports and or services. First and foremost, always trust your gut. That is, if the changes that you've noticed in a student are causing you concern, then it definitely would be appropriate for you to take action. Now, what course of action to take will depend on several factors. For example, you might consider whether you have an established relationship with the student. If so, you could approach the student one-on-one -on -one and start out with a broad question. That includes a validating statement. Something like, I notice that your grades have been slipping lately, and I know that you care very much about your schoolwork. I'm very concerned, and I'm wondering, is something going on? This attempt can contribute to you having an open and honest dialogue with your student that might result in the student helping you to connect some dots. Now, I realize you might be in a position where you do not have a connection with this student. So in this case, you could talk with one of your colleagues to figure out which one of them might be able to approach the student. You could also compare notes with him or her. If it seems that none of these seem to fit, then don't forget about your school social worker or other behavioral health professionals within your school that might be able to approach the student and intervene directly. At that point, this behavioral health provider will know what to do. So, in sum, I want to leave you with this. You've received a Handle with Care notification. And some of the information that I've just presented resonates with you. So I would encourage you to implement these steps so we may help this student get the additional support or services that he or she needs. Thank you. Hi, I'm Melissa Pinsky, Education Manager for Preschool Programs at the Washtenaw Intermediate School District. Thanks for watching this Handle with Care training video. By now, you've learned some of the signs and symptoms of trauma in the children with whom you work, and you have an idea of what you can do in the classroom to support these and all children. If you have additional questions or are looking for local resources, please visit www.washtenawisd.org slash Handle with Care. All Handle with Care materials, including these PowerPoint presentations and additional resources about trauma and resiliency can be found at that website. In addition to this video and to others in the Handle with Care series, you've also been provided the Washtenaw Trauma Information Tool. This tool makes a great reference for you and is also a resource that you can provide to parents. Additionally, please note that the Handle with Care form that you receive in the event of a child's exposure to a traumatic event can also be used as a referral form if you feel that child is in need of additional support. Both of these items can be found on the website, www.washtenawisd.org slash Handle with Care. As trusted adults in the lives of children, your role in supporting kids who have been exposed to trauma cannot be underestimated. Thanks for joining us on this journey as we work toward becoming a trauma-informed community.